There has been a lot going on lately and I have been distracting myself with books. So I had two great books arrive. Designing Machine Learning Systems and AI Engineering by Chip Huyen. I hope I'm not butchering that name, but I probably am. Chip is an extremely well-known technologist and a very, very good writer. So if you are doing anything in the AI space, then I would highly recommend that you um, familiarize yourself with some of these books and take a look at Chip's LinkedIn or uh, her blog or anything like that because she is a wealth of knowledge. A lot of people I've seen will get a new technical book and they'll sit down and try to read it like a novel. So they'll try to just like open to chapter one and then start reading. That is not the way that I approach a technical book uh, for one reason. So the way that I look at some of these complex concepts is that they are going to imprint in my mind through a kind of layered approach. So at first I need a high level understanding. I need some context. I need to know where these different pieces of information are going to fit. And so I take a different approach to sitting down to read a technical book than I do a novel. And the approach that I take is really like a blueprint for a building or scaffolding or a foundation for a home. I need to get an idea of what kind of information is in this resource and where it is in the context of other things, because what helps me learn is tying different concepts together so that I have a good understanding of both the high level concepts and then what little details are going to be hidden in each of the topics within. So I'm going to show you my approach to getting a new book today, and I'm just going to film and talk out loud and give you an idea of what my process looks like when I'm familiarizing myself with a brand new book before I'm just diving in chapter by chapter. Okay, so this is AI Engineering, Building Applications with Foundation Models by Chip Huyen. Let me show you how I start to familiarize myself with a book so I can build that scaffolding, that knowledge scaffolding that I was just talking about. So the first thing I do is quickly skim the front just to see if there is like a prologue or um, any notes to the author or something like that. And then I'll stop at the table of contents. So I don't go all the way to chapter one immediately or anything like that. I go right to the table of contents. So the first thing I'm noticing here is this is largely introduction material. So the rise of AI engineering, foundation model use cases, planning AI applications, the AI engineering stack. So this is all kind of foundational material, really just giving me an idea of why this book is useful and what's important here. So I know that just from looking at this chapter that I'm going to get a lot of background information from this, but not a whole lot of in-depth technical detail from it. And that's fine. That might be the best place to start. Okay, so then let me move these. Okay, so then we start to get into more technical depth. So I'm looking at chapter two now, and this is very specifically training data, modeling, post-training, sampling. So this looks like far more practical way to understand foundation models. And likely there's gonna be specifics here to foundation models that maybe aren't the same way for other types of ML models. I would have to read more to figure that out, but this is kind of like the cueing that I give my brain to just um, take a mental map or make a mental map of what I'm seeing and where in the book it's gonna be if I need to reference that material again. Okay, so now I'm looking at Evaluation methodology. Um, this is interesting. So challenges of evaluating models, understanding model metrics, exact evaluation. I'm actually not very familiar with the difference here. So that's an interesting thing for me to keep in mind is 
the modeling metrics versus exact evaluation. There's definitely a knowledge gap for me there. Uh, and then this next section, AI as a judge, I haven't really considered that as much, but it could be relevant to my research since uh, I do use generative AI as part of my research. So there's potential there to have like a voting scheme. Uh, and it sounds like this is what that is referring to. So I'm already thinking about like, okay, chapter three is going to have some evaluation methodology and something like this might be relevant to my research. So that's a good place or like a kind of a mental tab I'm keeping in my mind. Okay, so the chapter following that is evaluating AI systems or evaluate AI systems. So that's very specifically called out as being different from the methodology. So what I'm understanding from reading this section is that this is going to be very specific to actual model implementation, where chapter three might be more methodology based but there might be some context in chapter three that I need before chapter four. So that's something to keep in mind. Prompt engineering. I haven't done a huge amount of prompt engineering and it doesn't necessarily apply in my research. Um, let's see, introduction to prompting, best practices, defensive prompt engineering. That seems pretty interesting, I think, but maybe not relevant to my research, just something I'd be interested in learning more about. Okay, moving on to chapter six, RAG and agents. If you're not familiar with RAG, it's retrieval augmented generation. I'm not currently using that in my research, but it is a very interesting field and it does seem to be growing. So probably worth keeping in mind and referring back to at some point, just to try to fill in some knowledge gaps there. Okay, fine tuning. I feel like this is probably a section that I will end up putting a sticky note in. Uh, fine tuning, techniques, memory bottlenecks. There's probably a lot of good stuff in here. This might be a section that just gets referenced over and over again. Uh, data set engineering, that is for sure relevant to my research. Um, I, use, I have a huge amount of robotics data, lots of sensor data, all types of things like that. So this is gonna be a really important chapter for me. And to be honest, since I'm building a training data set right now, I might just go to this chapter and skim it a little bit and see what's there and see if any of it's relevant to my research right away before I do any deep dives into the other chapters. Inference optimization also gonna be useful to me right now because that's another part of my uh, training, or I'm sorry, of my model pipeline. Um, when it's deployed on the robot, there is an inference step and it currently is a little slow. So optimization would be a good thing to check out, but I definitely think this data set engineering is something I would go to before nine. Um, then architecture and user feedback. This is interesting because I haven't for better or worse, really considered user feedback much. Um, so what I'm sort of getting from this chapter 10 is that there's gonna be a lot in there that can teach me something about actual product use rather than just a research context where it's like it works once or twice or you know a couple of times actually deploying something into the real world and getting consistent user feedback about it is a whole different animal. So this is probably something that will teach me a lot, but maybe not as relevant to research right now. Um, then there's just an epilogue and index. I do like to check the index and see how in depth it is so that I know if I want to reference something, I can just go to this index and refer to it. That's really helpful. It looks pretty in-depth to me. So that's just a good thing to know is that I can rely on the index if I want to look something up. Some books, they don't have a very good index, so it's not very reliable. Okay, and then there's just the preface and on to chapter one. So 
That is how I start familiarizing myself with a technical book. I'm basically building a concept map, a mental map of where everything is in the book and how the different things fit together. Because when I start actually reading, I like to pull these concepts into things that I already know or things that I already use. And that is what gives me um, just a better grasp on the material. And to be honest, it just helps me uh, keep it in mind um, or remember it much better. So that is my approach to this. If you are a CU student, you have access to uh, AI engineering and designing machine learning systems, uh, digital access through your login credentials for the university. So you don't even need to purchase a book. You already have access. Uh, personally, I just learn better from print media. I'm having a hard time uh, staying focused when I'm reading digitally. So that's why I just purchased copies of the book. I know they'll be useful to me. Um, hopefully that was useful to you. If you have strategies that you use to help you understand technical material, I would love to hear about them, uh, whether it's in a comment on the video, or maybe you want to shoot me an email, um, something like that totally works. I'd, I'd love to hear your feedback. I'm always looking for ways to make learning a little bit more, uh, enjoyable and to help things kind of encode in my memory a lot better. So that's how I approach things. I hope that was helpful to you and uh, I will see you in the next one.